Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 353, Lead Poisoning. Describe how lead poisoning can lead to microcytic hypochromic anemia. Lead poisoning will inhibit enzymes needed to make heme, and if you're not able to make heme, you would also not be able to make hemoglobin. Name the two enzymes that lead poisoning inhibits. Lead poisoning will inhibit two of the enzymes needed for heme synthesis, and those are pyroketolase and aminolevulenic acid dehydratase. And when these two enzymes are inhibited, this will lead to decrease in the heme synthesis. Why does basophilic stippling occur in lead poisoning? Lead poisoning will inhibit ribosomal RNA degradation, which causes RBCs to retain aggregates of ribosomal RNA. And the aggregates of the ribosome will lead to basophilic stippling. One thing to note about lead poisoning is that there is a high risk of lead poisoning in houses with chipped paint. Name all the areas of the body that would be affected by lead poisoning. Lead poisoning can lead to problems of the gums, long bones, brain, and RBCs. What gum problem can arise due to lead poisoning? Lead poisoning will lead to buildup of lead in the gums, so this leads to lead lines on the gingiva, and these are known as the Burton's line. What is Burton's line? Burton's line is a clinical sign found in patients with lead poisoning. It's a thin, gray-blue line visible along the margins of gums at the base of teeth. Where else would you find the lead lines? You would also see lead lines on metaphyses of long bones on x-ray. What red blood cell problems can arise due to lead poisoning? Red blood cell problems that can arise due to lead poisoning include cytoblastic anemia and erythrocyte basophilic stippling. A couple of additional conditions that can arise due to lead poisoning include encephalopathy, abdominal colic, and wrist and foot drops. What is the mnemonic to help you remember all the conditions that can arise due to lead poisoning? Just remember the word lead and that will help you remember all the things that can arise due to lead poisoning. Lead stands for lead lines seen on the gingiva as well as on long bones. E stands for encephalopathy and erythrocyte basophilic stippling. A stands for abdominal colic and cytoblastic anemia. The word anemia has the letter A in it. And D stands for wrist and foot drops. So that should basically help you remember all the things that can arise due to lead poisoning. Name the first-line drugs used in the treatment of lead poisoning. The first-line drugs used in the treatment of lead poisoning are the chelating agents dimercaprol and EDTA. And EDTA stands for adetic acid. What is the chelating agent used in kids for treating lead poisoning? The chelating agent used in kids for lead poisoning is succimer. What is the mnemonic to help you remember? Succimer is used in chelation for kids. The mnemonic is to remember that it sucks to be a kid who eats lead. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.